This is Personal Injury Court. Good day, everyone. This is the matter of Patch versus Miller. Ms. Patch, it's my understanding that you're suing Mr. Miller for injuries that you sustained when he fired a weapon at you and you fell and hurt yourself. You believe it's all his fault. You're asking this court to award you $15,000 for your past medicals, $5,000 for your future medicals, $20,000 for pain and suffering for a total award of $40,000. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Miller, you believe that uh, she better be glad you didn't hit her. She's in the wrong place, wrong time, all her fault. This is not your fault. True? That's right, Your Honor. Well, let's get into the legal sauce. Tell me about that night that led you to uh, this incident. Well, Your Honor, I'm actually um, an ER nurse at the hospital, and I was lucky enough to get a job at the same hospital that my father works at, and he's an orthopedic surgeon, and he is, you know, since I was a little girl, I've wanted to be what he is. I want to save lives. I want to do what he does. And I um, should have had girls. <laughs> you, well, um, but uh, Your Honor, the night of the incident, um, I had worked a double shift and I was exhausted. It's yeoman's work. Nurses are our heroes for sure. They really are. And um, you know, my dad had called me earlier that day and said, come crash at my place tonight. You do not need to be driving home because I live an hour away. And um, he only lives about 10 minutes from the hospital. So he said, just come crash at my place. I don't trust you driving that late at night. You know, I was getting off my shift at 3 or 4 a.m. I'm exhausted. I can barely form sentences. And you, you got know, a good dad. <laughs> I do. At the end of my shift, I end up calling a ride share and I go outside and as soon as I get in the car, I pass out. I'm exhausted. And the next thing I know, I'm being, you know, woken by the driver saying, you know, we've arrived. So, so Mr. Miller, how long have you lived in this community? I've been in the community almost 10 years, Your Honor. And it has been a quiet community up until the night when this woman invaded the sanctity of my home. Ow. Outrageous. Well, what do you remember about this night? I was home. I was watching westerns. They remind me of a time when people took personal responsibility for their own actions. Oh, please. Yes, sir. All right. So, Miss Patch, uh, tell me, how did you? You're awakened by the driver in the car. Then what happens? I get out of the car. I am half asleep. I mean, I am, you know, it's kind of stumbling up the driveway. But you know, my dad had told me I'm going to leave the back door open. Just come on in. I'm going to wait up for you. So you know, I walk in and I start calling for dad. I'm like, Dad, like I'm home. Just want to let you know. And. All of a sudden, I see a silhouette of a man coming down the stairs, expecting it to be my father. And, you know, I can hear somebody, I can hear him yelling, but it doesn't make sense to me. I don't understand why my dad will be yelling at me. I'm coming in. It's super early in the morning. Okay. And I get closer to him and realize that's not my father. And, you know, before I could even react, this man, Mr. Miller, had cocked his gun and fired. And I cannot tell you. Your Honor, how scared to death I was for my own life. And here I am trying to save lives every day. And I'm scared for my own life at this point. So, so you went into Mr. Miller's home thinking it was your dad's house. Exactly, yes, Your Honor. Okay, so this really shocked you. I mean, when I say I was half asleep, I was full awake at this point after he cocked his gun and shot it at me. Now, Mr. Miller, tell me what's going on. How did you know that night that something untoward was happening? As I said, I was watching TV. I heard a noise, turned the TV down, and it, I could hear it clearly. Somebody was breaking into my back door. So I grabbed my breaking gun. The door was Excuse open. Me. It I, was open, I Mr. grabbed Miller. my gun like anyone would to defend myself anyone? and you, my property. You keep your gun ready? Exactly. That's why I have it. I'm, I'm a licensed gun owner, and uh, so when I came down the steps, I see an intruder in my kitchen. And you've got she, your gun in your hand at I've got point. my gun in my hand. I was yelling at her to stop. She kept moving towards me. I cocked the gun so she knew I was serious. I fired a warning shot out the back door. But there at were no point, lights on. What do you at think that was gonna, point, how did you know it was not gonna hit me in the head, Mr. At Miller? At that point, she turned around and ran. I heard a scream, I went out. She had fallen going down the steps, and she wasn't moving. I called 911. Your Honor, so, Ms. Patch, you... you run out the back door, and that's, that's how you're hurt? 
Yes. Tell me how that happened. So, like I said, I was shook to the core as soon as he had fired that shot, and I am running for the back door. I am, I'm in full on fight or flight mode. And, you know, it's pitch black dark, there are no lights on. And so I'm only going by memory of what, how I remember the back door being. And I run out the back door, trip over two of the steps, and end up landing on my left side and breaking my shoulder, but my, my shoulder and my ankle bone. Now, uh, Mr. Miller, you said she broke into your house. What did she do? I was in my own home. She came into my house. All I knew was that I, I thought I was in the middle of a home invasion. So you and were, you were making commands to her, exactly. stop, get out of my house. Yes. Did, did you hear yes. him say that, Ms. I Patch? I worked a double shift. She's a zombie. She works I'm, 24 I'm hours. I'm exhausted, Your Honor. Your Honor, I'm sorry she was tired, but that doesn't put the responsibility on me. She still broke into my house. The door is open. You keep saying breaking in. You I know, I, I've done I a lot of felonies it, in my time. A break-in is they knocked that thing off the hinge. Your Honor, at that point, I didn't know if I had locked up for the night yet or not. But I know that she 4 was... She, I didn't invite her into my home. She didn't knock or ring the doorbell. She came in... I thought it was my father's into house. ...into the privacy of my home. Were All you I frightened? Did, Yes, I was frightened for my life. Maybe if you turned a light on, you'd have seen that I was just an exhausted You know, nurse. when Ms. somebody Sass, breaks talk, talk into your home, you don't turn talk the light me. on. You don't turn the light on and say, here, shoot at me. But you, you, fire, you fired a gun at her? I did, I did not fire the gun at her. I fired a warning shot out the it back door. It was pitch door. black dark. You don't know that if you weren't, I, like, I'm shooting at my head. I'm a train. Your Honor, completely Ms. irresponsible. Dr. Patch, please stand and come to the podium. You were in your home that night. I, I live in the same community, yes, sir. I've I, been there I, quite some time. I've been at the hospital 10 years plus. So this is a pretty quiet community, right? All the homes look the same. They're track homes, and okay. I understand the mistake. They all look exactly the same. I told her early in the evening, I'll leave the back door open for you. So she did exactly what even in her diminished state, she would have done. How'd you find out something bad happened to your daughter? I prepped some food, assuming she'd be, be home at a point where we could at least engage, but it got later and later, and I fell asleep on the couch. In the midst of the night, I was awakened by a loud boom, which I found out was a shot, but I realized then, my daughter's not here. And I ran to Mr. Miller's backyard, and there he was, waving his gun, hollering, yelling, and screaming. And thank and God my Mr. dad Mr. Miller, is that what knows? you were doing? Your Honor, I was standing there. I just realized that she was hurt. She was hurt because she fell. She was because lifeless. Because she had been she was in laying my home. I thought, my I, daughter. Had, I thought And I then I called 911, and even though it wasn't his place to do it, I put my gun down when he, my when he said to. And you know, as a father, the first thing I taught my child was to be responsible for your own actions. And apparently this man I'm going forgot to, protect to teach that my to his daughter. daughter. You know, it's, it's not often that I get two dads in here. This is a different dynamic for me. Uh, I'm a dad too, I've got three sons. Personal responsibility is important for everyone. Gun owners, as well as uh, folks who mistakenly walk into somebody's house. But, Your Honor, you will continue to protect your family and your dear ones. Yes, I completely agree. I was protecting Miller, my home and myself. He's pretty lucky, Your Honor. The fact that, I mean, he I, I think everybody's kind of lucky, don't you think? I mean, I'm very lucky that he didn't, you know, accidentally shoot me in the head and I wouldn't be here today. Hold on. But, Mr. Miller, I got to tell you something. She doesn't look like a rowdy intruder coming in to harm you, at least you, here Hunter. today. Amen. So uh, it, it, it takes it, yes. me some time to get my arms around yes, your this Honor. In the vicious light, in the light of day, nurse in the light that gets of day, in your house. Armed sheriff right here, yes, we feel safe. At 3 o'clock in the morning, when an unknown intruder comes into your house unannounced, a nurse, you Honor, don't in feel... scrubs. Now, how did I know she was a nurse? Your Honor, in your scrubs. Honor. Ms. Patch, tell me about your injuries. You've got your arm uh, wrapped up there. Tell me what happened. You know, when I fell down the stairs, I fell on my left side, and um, the only thing that was louder than Mr. Miller shooting his gun at me was the popping of my ankle bone. It was... I've never been in that excruciating pain before. 
It baffles me that this really didn't have to happen if he had turned on a light. Dr. Patch, you submitted an animation to this court to explain your daughter's injuries. I want to put that up on the plasma screen and talk me through it. Tell me what we're looking at. Yes, sir. Thank you. May I? Could you come over to the plasma? As an orthopedist, I have access to these animations. And as my daughter ran off of the platform, she experienced an everting or an outturning of her ankle that actually caused the tips of both the tibia and the fibula to be broken completely off. Now, and come through the skin? Through the skin, a compound fracture. The, the uniqueness of this injury is that some people never fully recover. Oh, I know that was but, painful. I see, I see your face, Miss Patch. I can barely reliving watch it, this. Your Honor. So, doctor, what do you do to repair that? There are pins, there are plates, and some people have to live with those the rest of their lives. The silliness, silliest things, if you go through the airport security, you're going to beep, you're going to get patted down. It's, it, it affects your life in a hundred different ways. Just How because of this trigger-happy maniac. Sir, you can return to your podium. So, Mr. Miller, I mean, this is, this is a bad result. Your heart's got to tug a little bit with a young woman with this kind of injury. It's a permanent Your Honor, injury. I, I feel bad for her injury. That doesn't make it my responsibility. Don't you think your reaction was a little bit too much? But he has some responsibility. If it had been an armed invader, would we be even questioning about this now? Or we would... Excuse me, Your Honor, it was not an armed invader, and I don't think we do what-ifs in the courtroom. This is my neighbor, Your Honor. It's a we gated community. We have attended homeowners association meetings before. We okay. have a wonderful community. And has seen me, Your we... Honor. I'm not hard to miss. I'm not going to lie. I'm six foot tall, and I'm a redhead. He probably would have seen me had he really looked. So, so, doctor, you said about the homeowners association, you've seen Mr. Miller before? Mr. Miller is a happy participant in our homeowners meeting, and he makes no bones about the fact that he is ready, willing, and able to defend anyone and everyone in our community because he is a gun owner. And, and he you know, is and very, I don't, very and quick Honor, to I tell. I do not apologize for that. In America, it's my legal right to own but and be trained to use the gun it, and to Honor. use a gun to protect myself and my property. Well, maybe lock your and, door and so before... And so that y'all... So that y'all understand, in our country, as long as people use guns legally and responsibly, the law protects them. Absolutely, sir. But you said responsibly. Exactly. Mr. Miller, is it fair or unfair to say you're a gun enthusiast? I'm grateful for my right to keep and be trained to use a firearm and to protect myself and my property. The problem is, is not everyone is responsible and frankly, not everybody should have a gun. Folks, I think I've heard what I need to hear. I'm ready to render my decision. <laughs> Folks, in every personal injury case, the plaintiff, you Miss Pat, you've got to prove three things. You've got to prove that a wrong by the defendant, Mr. Miller, caused your harm. You put up evidence today that you simply made a mistake and went into the wrong house. You went in thinking that your dad was going to greet you. Instead, you get a gun fired at you and you run out, trip and fall, tear your body up, and you're going to pay for it the rest of your life. Mr. Miller, you believe you got the right to defend your home. You didn't know what was happening that night. What you did know is that you needed to get that person out of your house. You could have shot her but you decided to shoot over her head to make sure she knew that you were not playing and she'd have an opportunity to escape unharmed. The legal bottom line here is that everyone must be careful to take care of their own safety, both by mistake and by gun owner. Here you were wrong, you picked the wrong house and you are very fortunate that he did not shoot you. You, on the other hand, you had every right to defend yourself, and although you may have overreacted, the law does not hold you responsible under these circumstances for defending your home. 
I find against the plaintiff, despite the severity of your injuries, the law compels me to find against you and in your favor, Mr. Yes. Miller. That Thank is you, my Your final Honor. verdict, and this matter is adjourned. <laughs> yes. Our attorneys across America just viewed this case for the first time. Let's hear what Andrew Finkelstein has to say. The x-rays of the plaintiff's horrific fracture of her leg and her dad's testimony regarding the severity of the breaks were heart-wrenching. But this case illustrates an important legal principle. Just because you are severely hurt on someone's property does not mean it's their fault. The plaintiff's actions of walking in the wrong house put herself in harm's way. The defendant had a right to protect himself when he felt he was in imminent danger. is Personal Injury Court. Good day, everyone. This is the matter of Howard versus Stewart. Ms. Howard, it's my understanding that you are suing Ms. Stewart for a tattoo gone horribly wrong. You're asking this court for $1,000 for your past expenses, $2,000 for your future expenses, $50,000 for emotional distress for a total award of $53,000. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And Ms. Stewart, you believe you gave Ms. Howard what she asked for. Had she been paying attention, she would have gotten what she wanted. But what she got is what she asked for. True? Yes, Your Honor. Well, let's get into the legal sauce. Ms. Howard, tell me why you wanted a tattoo. I wanted this tattoo to commemorate the memory of my grandmother that just passed away a year ago. She referred to me as her firstborn because I was her firstborn grandchild. She basically raised me along with my parents when my parents weren't there. She meant the world to me. She's the number one person that knows absolutely everything about me. And when she left me a year ago, I was so hurt. I've never felt pain like that before. And I just wanted to do something nice to have of her memory with me forever. What was your plan for the tattoo? I wanted to get a tattoo that had her favorite flower, which are roses, and I wanted it to read, I love granny, born first. And I wanted it to be written, the word granny, in her handwriting that she left for me in a letter before she passed away. And then I looked up the best tattoo shops around me and I found Queenie's tattoo shop. It had the best reviews and on her website it said 100% satisfied customers. Okay. Miss Stewart, tell me about your shop. I've been tattooing for 15 years. I've owned this shop for 12. Um, like, like she said even, you know, she looked me up online. She saw that I have really good reviews. I tattoo a lot of celebrities and musicians. Tattoos by me are not cheap. Um, I take my work very seriously. And she came in wanting to tattoo for, for her grandmother and she made an appointment. So what happened? So I showed Queenie the design and I asked, can you make this look pretty? Let me get Sheriff Matt to, to get that for you. So this is the design you went in with, right? Yes, that's just a rough draft of my writing, which I kind of wanted it to look like, but I wanted her to add roses and make it look pretty, obviously. And where it says Granny, that's actually your grandmother's signature. Yes, Your Honor. That's a, that's a beautiful thing. And born first is what she called you. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, did you understand that, Ms. Stewart? Yes, Your Honor, I did. Okay, and you remember seeing this document? Yes, I do. Did you take this and turn it into a fancier design? Yes, and everything that I, I did, she approved. Uh, I went over everything with her. Um, she, every, every time I, I made an arrangement or adjustment, she, she said it looked great um, when I... So when you I, were careful in trying to figure out exactly what she wanted? Yes, yes. So, Ms. Howard, what happened? She said, come in a couple days after to get your tattoo. So I went in, and everything went great until a couple days later, I had a staff party along with my second grade fellow staff teachers and some parents. And it was my first time showing off the tattoo. I was so excited. I wore a low-cut dress, made sure it showed my back. I was hanging out at the party until people started pointing and laughing at me. And I'm like, what's going on? Do I have something on my face? And I go to the bathroom quickly, and I have a coworker following me behind. And she goes, um, why do you have a tattoo that says, uh, I love granny porn? And I said, oh. granny porn? Like, so this, I'm in disbelief. This, I have, 
I didn't ask for granny porn. Do I look like someone that would have profanity written on me? I'm a second grade teacher. I'm so embarrassed at this point. So you think, until you see it, you think your tattoo is going to say, I love granny born first, not granny porn first. Yes, I'm pretty sure my grandmother is rolling around in her grave right now looking at this. Granny porn? Your Honor, <laughs> I showed her the design from the get-go. I, I drew it out, I showed it to her, she said it looks great. I made a stencil, I showed it to her, she said it looks great. I put it on her skin, she said, okay, it looks great. This is not my fault. She approved every aspect of this design. I'm not responsible for this. She said this is what she wanted, she was happy with it, and she gave me the go-ahead. Okay, so go through the process, because I want to see what your safeguards are. What do you say to her on the first day? Well, on the first day, she was asking a bunch of questions. She brought in the design, and then I went from there. And so I, when I, when I brought this out and I showed it to her, I said, you know, is this what you want? And she so said, So you yes. showed her the design on this iPad? Yes. Okay. And do you remember seeing this design? She showed me the design when I'm laying on my stomach. She showed me from behind. She came up behind me with an iPad saying, does this look right? I'm laying down, upside down. How am I supposed to... From my angle, that P. So you're looks on like your stomach, yes, and sir. you're looking back this way to try to look at the design to make sure it's accurate. Yes, Your Honor. She should have shown me the design when I was sitting up, not laying down. That's so unprofessional. So when you're lying on your stomach and you're looking over your shoulder, you look at the design and you think you're seeing "I love Granny" born first. Yes, Your Honor. And that's why you said yes. Yes, Your Honor. But instead, the tattoo said "I love Granny." Porn first. Yes, Your Honor, and I would have never approved of something like that. I do not look like somebody that wants something like that written on me. So I showed you this from the get-go. You approved you it three separate times. You showed me when I was time. laying down on my stomach. I didn't show it to you upside down. Do you show down? all your clients Talk on their me, stomach? Ladies. So you put granny porn on her back, and you say it's not your fault. I went off the design that she showed me, and she approved every aspect of it. I am not responsible for this. She had ample time to go through and tell me that she wanted changes or that she didn't like things, and she never said a word. Are you illiterate? Can you not know the difference from a B to a P? I'm well, asking. Well, hold on now. Doesn't that apply to you, though? Don't I you know the difference design. between a P and a B? Yes, I do. And if she I... would have shown me when I was sitting You're a teacher. down, don't not you know your ABCs? On my stomach, you don't know your ABCs. You clearly don't. You this is your design. Ladies, talk this to me. This is your design. Talk to me, Miss Stewart. Who likes granny porn? I mean, you have to know that. I don't know her life. How do you think I feel trying to go to a family barbecue? I can't even go outside now without wearing a jacket. Yes, it's literally like 85 degrees outside and I have to wear a jacket this at recess with my kids. This is so embarrassing. I'm mortified. I was trying to just honor my grandmother and now I have my whole family against me. Let, let's call this what it is. Miss Stewart, you knew that she didn't want the words granny porn porn on her back, right? Correct. That is not what I wrote. And if she wants to interpret it that way, it was on her to tell me that she wanted change. And, and I well, wait, 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 wait a minute now. You made a stencil, some kind of transfer, right? Yes, Your Honor. And it said granny porn. It said granny born. Porn. Okay, granny born. But you tattooed granny porn. <sighs> no, no, I did not. Okay, well, I'm not responsible did. for this. <laughs> you can see on the plasma her, her note. It says, I love granny, born first. That's a, that's a big mistake. That's what it says. It says and, porn. And on your stencil, it says, I love granny porn. Maybe I'm missing something. I born and porn are two different universes. I would ask you, is this what you want? And if you said yes, then that's what's going on you. She signed a waiver. I mean, I am not responsible for this. I mean, I, I have you bring it right your here. waiver with you. Yes, Your Honor, I did. All right, Sheriff Matt, will you get it for me? Thank you, sir. I got the best. Let's look at it. And uh, Miss Howard, is that your signature at the bottom? Yes, Your Honor. All right, so it reads: I waive and release to the fullest extent permitted by law all claims, actions, suits against any person of the best little tattoo shop from all liability whatsoever. Then it says, Best Little Tattoo Shop and its employees have given me the full opportunity to ask any question about the procedure and application of my tattoo, and all of my questions, if any, have been answered to my total satisfaction. After such consultation, I have agreed to have the procedure. Let me give you a legal lesson. 
You must read legal documents when you sign them, especially when you waive all of your rights in case something bad happens. You sign this, and if this taken in a vacuum, this case is over and you lose. Now, it is not in a vacuum because this court has to consider all the evidence, but this waiver is very important. You understand that? Yes, Your Honor. Folks, to understand tattoos and the business of tattoos, this court has brought reality star and tattoo artist Cat Tat is here today. Sheriff Matt, will you bring Cat Tat into the courtroom? Yes, Your Honor. Miss Cat, now you've recently opened your own shop. Tell me about that. Yes, yeah, so we actually just recently celebrated the one year anniversary for my shop. Um, it's called Enigma Tattoo. We're located in Beverly Hills. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Now you've tattooed a lot of celebrities, right? Yes. Like who? Um, I've tattooed Idris Elba, Faith Evans, Super Bowl champions, um, Von Miller, Shane Ray, um, musicians, Young M.A. I mean, countless celebrities are constantly coming through the shop. <laughs> You've changed a lot of famous skin, haven't you? Yeah, you know, I do what I can. <laughs> now, what are your most popular designs? Um, well, people come to me for my close attention to detail. I specialize in really anything realistic, so portraits, flowers. Um, I do a ton of cover-ups as well. Maybe like 80% of what I do is, is cover-ups. People see that I specialize in these larger pieces and they think I can cover anything up, so, yeah. Are there any rules that apply to tattoos? Yes, there's a ton. Do your research. Make sure that you're in a professional shop. Make sure that you have researched your artists and they're capable of doing the type of work that you want. Double, triple check um, spelling, you know. Have you ever, when showing the tattoo to the client, have you ever shown it to the client while they're lying on their stomach? You know, my process is I put the design on you and I say, come on, let's walk over to this mirror. You look in the mirror. If it's on your back, I'm going to give you a handheld mirror so you can look at it like this and see what it looks like from that. So I always take extra precautions. It's a permanent procedure. It's like mini surgery. Now, you've brought along a video that you've submitted to this court. Let's mm -hmm. put it up on the plasma screen and walk me through it. This is a video of me tattooing myself, right? Because what better person to practice on than yourself? So um, what I'm doing, I'm applying my stencil, basically, from the image that I approved. And once the stencil is on me, I let it dry, take a look at it, make sure it looks like, you know, what you want, and then you begin the tattoo. And then it's no going back from there. And you <laughs> did that to yourself? I did. You mentioned that you do a lot of cover-ups. Yes. What's, what's the process of covering up another tattoo? If it's a dark design, then likely you're gonna have to do something full color to saturate it so that it's really covered up. Now, Miss Howard has a tattoo on her back that says Granny Porn. Yes, that's unfortunate. <laughs> Could you come over to the monitor and yes. show us how you would cure this problem? Yes. So, there's a clear misspelling. I mean, this... Typically, you would think a B or a P could be turned into a B by adding an extra loop, but the spacing here is just off, you know? This would look ridiculous to try to put a small little loop in here. So this tattoo, 100%, you have to wait till it heals, wait till some of this bruising goes away, and then I'd be able to cover it. And I would cover it with something similar to this. Oh, my God. That's really beautiful. Thank you so, so much. Beautiful fully saturated roses that completely get rid of what you have. And then we can apply the correct spelling and the correct phrase that you wanted and just erase the whole mistake from your memory. So, Ms. Howard, that looks like a good fix. That I mean, not, not what you wanted, but a good <laughs> fix. That's beautiful. That's all I wanted, something beautiful like that to honor my grandmother. Come on back here, Ms. Kat. <laughs> you can return to the witness stand. Ms. Stewart, this is a permanent deal, right? Yes, Your Honor. If she doesn't get this covered up, she's got granny porn on her back. <sighs> while, while we <laughs> chuckle about that, this is something that haunts her. You see that, right? This is really not funny. My whole family, my grandmother, was a church-going woman. I, like, can't even walk in a church right now. I went off the design that you approved. You did I'm not. Sorry. You did not. This I did not, not approve fault. the is... word porn. You porn and porn are completely every different. Of this and like she said, I put there's even you. no you room to fix waiver. the beat. I'm sorry. Ladies, I think I've heard enough. I'm ready to render my decision. 
folks, this, like so many of the other cases that I've presided over, is a personal injury case with three components. You, as the plaintiff, have to prove that Ms. Stewart was wrong and, and that Ms. Stewart's wrong caused your injury. And you've put up evidence that you did your best to make sure that this tribute to your grandmother would be perfect. Yeah. I love Granny, born first. And you trusted this professional to do what you asked her to do. Instead, you suffered a very embarrassing moment. You, Miss Stewart, you went through the protocol to get her to approve what you put on her skin. That you're not the marshal of what's appropriate. If she wants it, doesn't matter what it is, if she approves it and signs your waiver, then you're going to give her what she wants. Well, in this case, everyone must be attentive to the details, not just the professional, but the client. You've got to make sure that what you want is what you're going to get. You are the backstop. Here, the issue is whether a service provider, such as a tattoo artist, has a duty beyond giving the service that you asked for. The evidence shows you wanted born, but you signed a waiver saying you're getting what you wanted, you understand, you had time to ask questions, and you're ready to put the tattoo on, and she put on what she showed to you. The law requires me to find in your favor, even though I think you should have asked her, do you really want porn? I find in the defendant's favor and against you because the law requires me to do that based on the evidence. And that is my final verdict. This matter is adjourned. Our attorneys across America just viewed this case for the first time. Let's hear what Andrew Finkelstein has to say. A tattoo was permanent. The plaintiff knew this going into the procedure and should have made sure the artwork, including the spelling, was 100% correct. She did not do this. She signed a waiver that released the defendant from all claims of negligence arising out of the tattoo process. Please, read and understand what claims you may be waiving before signing any release. The repercussions can be permanent. I feel terrible for the victim. Yes, ma'am. If it's possible, I would like to offer her my services for this cover up free of service. Did you hear that? Yes, Your Honor. Oh my God, thank you so much. Yeah. That means the world to me and to my grandmother and my family. Thank you so much. I got you, girl. Look at you taking care of.